Hello, welcome to the show. Today we're going to talk about a garage door monitor, uh, and this is actually good for any door. Any door where you can actually mount a, a magnetic reed switch. So it can be an internal house door, external house door, uh, door to a shed, or anything else whereby you can actually get power and mount one of these little magnetic reed switches. So let's take a look at the parts that we're going to use for this project and explain what they all do and how to uh, put them together. So all we really need for this project, and I've already mounted this onto just a piece of uh, MDF again, all we really need for this project is a, an Arduino. This is a Freetronics uh, 11. It's just a slightly different version of an Arduino. Uh, the main differences are that the uh, uh, the USB, instead of being a, a standard Type A plug, this has got a uh, mini USB, um, and yeah, it's basically it. So this is an uh, a Freetronics 11 Arduino, so it's a Uno R3 compatible, and we are going to be using, an, uh, again by Freetronics, but there is a multitude of these, W5100s I think is the derivative. This is an ethernet shield. So this is literally pinned out or ready to go straight on top of an Arduino. Uh, match up the pins and simply insert. This is powered from the Arduino, so no additional power is required. And all you do is you insert a standard ethernet cable here, and that gives you all of the communications that you actually need. So inclusive of the Arduino itself, the ethernet shield, We'll obviously need, depending on how many doors, uh, in today's example I'll actually be using two doors. Uh, so I'll need two sets of these magnetic reed switches. And you need to mount those to your, uh, your door. And if you've got a, a sliding door, uh, mounting these can actually sometimes get a bit tricky. But um, yep, that's what we'll be using. And obviously some form of power supply for the Arduino. Uh, this is a 9 volt uh, standard plug pack. One of the challenges for this project, so you've got your Arduino and you've got your Ethernet shield which will give you communications, so Ethernet data in and out. Uh, the main challenge with this is if you're in a, a remote location or you want in a shed uh, or the door that you actually wish to monitor with this solution doesn't have a PowerPoint local uh, or you don't have Ethernet cabling going to that area, uh, this solution is a little problematic. There are alternatives. You can actually get uh, Wi-Fi shields, which is the same principle. You just need to use a Wi-Fi shield and modify your code to suit. Um, and you can uh, hack Ethernet cabling. So if you only had Ethernet cabling going to the point that you wished to use, uh, monitor a door, uh, you can actually hack the Ethernet cabling to provide both Ethernet and voltage to the Arduino. We'll cover that at some other time, but uh, that's also a solution. If you can't get power, but you can run a length of ethernet cable, you can still get power out of the ethernet cable to power the project. We'll quickly have a look at the difference between the uh, Freetronics version of the Arduino and a typical Arduino R3. Uh, and we'll also assemble the two main components just to show you how it all goes together and uh, hook up an ethernet cable. The body, of the, work, uh, the body of the work for this particular project is the coding. There really isn't anything else. There are no resistors, no capacitors. It is simply the Arduino, the shield on top, ethernet cable power in, uh, and the two sensors that are needing to be connected to the Arduino shield. That is pretty much it. Um, and we'll get to that coding in a minute. But let's just have a look at the couple of different types of Arduino and the way the shields and all that assemble. Okay, so here is our Freetronics um, 11, and here is a standard Arduino. This is an Arduino, this might not be an R3. This is not, this is an original Arduino. So these are, are still extremely similar. All right, and the main difference is, as I pointed out, the USB port, this is your, your typical big Type A and this is a micro USB and there is a difference in the button just a slightly different button is used as the reset switch 
uh, and also on these uh, Freetronics versions they've got a, a small prototyping area here which is actually really really handy uh, you can mount uh, another small IC, run some resistors through there some other passive components, you can mount them on this actual board and make this more of a solution rather than needing another shield or an add-on board or a breakout board uh, same thing applies with the shield so this is the uh, the Ethernet shield these pinouts if you're not familiar with the Arduinos already these pinouts that are on the top you can connect things into these as well and you can stack uh, a number of shields this requires no power it takes its power from the pinout on the Arduino itself and again this has got a prototyping area already to go here uh, and a couple of jumpers for different selections but they're, they're in their um, standard configuration I haven't changed any of this so this particular uh, shield connects straight on top of as long as you line up your pins and now that I've said that it won't work for me yep, there we go so I've simply lined up all of the pins and you just give it a bit of pressure and that is it your Ethernet shield is now connected to your Arduino apply power, apply Ethernet apply your code, connect the um, sensors so ultimately these will just be connected to a slightly more permanent version of the pin connect to the suitable pinout that you've selected through your coding and you have, uh, a, you have a switch that will be detected by the Arduino these are uh, passive switches, they require no power whatsoever except power flowing through them, they don't really draw any power so that is it, that is all we need to get a uh, Ethernet enabled, web enabled uh, sensor up and running with the right code this can be read from your smartphone uh, and you can read whether the sensors are open or closed in other words a door is open or closed and you can also get this and we will uh, modify this to be able to uh, put something on a web page so that we can access it from inside of our own network we'll make a few changes to be able to make it accessible outside of our own network so from any smartphone on any cellular network in the world and over the internet and um, eventually implement a mailing module in the code so that this will send you an email reminder if you haven't closed the door or forgotten to close the door or the doors opened a predetermined amount of times or you just want to know every single time the doors opened so I finally finished the coding and we'll have a look at that now and then we'll test out the Arduino uh, the web page for the Arduino and the Arduino sending an email uh, and that will pretty much wrap it up okay so this is the web page this is really really just basic uh, and this tells us whether or not one of the doors is open and one of the doors is closed um, this is refreshed every five to ten seconds and that you can choose in the code so if we have a look at the code and see what's going on here we are so the um, includes are included at the top here set your uh, SMTP port and if you're using SSL you need to set something other than 25 uh, a lot of the email a lot of the email services won't take port 25 it'll be blocked so if you're wanting to use an SSL type encryption so proper logon, proper ser um, server name logon name and password this will actually still work this also doesn't need an additional PHP server somewhere it's easy to get uh, information out of an Arduino via serial over Ethernet to something that has a PHP script on it the PHP script actually enables the writing of the email and away you go I didn't want any other services I just wanted this to be able to do uh, everything autonomously and that's what it does so as we look through the code here we give our uh, give our Arduino an IP address, subnet, um, SMTP server and basically just yeah there are your credentials there for your logon uh, the Ethernet server component if you have a look at the Arduino web server examples that's what this is based on straight out of the examples and with the uh, email examples that are also available online overlaid and the two melded together so Ethernet server port when you give it a uh, specific port number like this 
you'll obviously see in the web page here that it highlights the port number and this is continually refreshing. This is handy if you want to do port forwarding on your actual router, that way you can access this little page and see whether or not one of the doors are open or closed uh, from anywhere on the internet. So the digital channels that I've declared here and the sensor readings here, these are just the integers that I've opened, uh, integers that I've declared for the two sensors or actually the two uh, magnetic read switches that I'm using, uh, just on digital one and digital zero. Uh, you can use any ports you like and I've just declared some uh, additional integers there. Makes life easy for me. I've also declared a small counter and I'll get to that counter section in, uh, in a moment. So Ethernet begin, all of this is pretty much standard stuff from the web server example and this is the email section. So the void loop, again, most of this is as the web, uh, web server example straight off the Arduino site or in your uh, Arduino libraries. And the main area here, I've just, uh, this is the actual web page section. Sorry, no it's not. This is the actual web page section here. So you can, you can pretty much name this whatever you want. Uh, I've added um, a serial, a couple of serial outputs here as well as the counter. So I've got two doors that I'm monitoring. So door one and door two, or more to the point, door zero and door one. So my counter, if both doors are open, will count at double the speed, and that's exactly what I'm after. All right, just moving quickly through. Again, this is all standard web server stuff, nothing specific changed here, and I've got a, an if statement down at the bottom here. If the counter is greater than a preset value, uh, if you have your web server refreshing every 10 seconds and you set your counter to six, obviously that means that the email will go off with one door open every minute. If that's too frequent, you might want to expand that out. I'll probably be setting my web page to refresh every 30 seconds and I'll set my counter to something like 20 minutes, uh, 20, which will give me a 10 minute window. So as you can see here, we're looking at the um, web page. I'll just refresh that. And it's now saying the door is open and that's this read switch that I've just opened up. So that door is now open. And if I close this, in five seconds or so this will refresh. And there you go, the door is now closed. And just once more, open that read switch, door's open. Okay, so it's, it's quite fast. It's quite quick and it's quite responsive. All right. So we've had a look at the code and here is our serial monitor. So the serial monitor has actually got a lot of data going through it, but the important part to uh, look at is this counter. So the counter is counting up two at a time. And the reason it's doing that is I've got two doors being monitored and I've got the counter being sequenced each one. So if it was only one door open, it would wait the full 10 minutes before it would send me a notification. If I've got two doors open, it will uh, send me a notification in five minutes and of course you can select any variables you like all right and it's just started to go into the email section here uh, whilst the email section is actually going through and the email section does take around about 15 seconds to complete there's some delays in there to allow for uh, um, responses to be acknowledged and so on so that the protocol doesn't fail and Whilst that's happening, the web page is on hold, if you like, but it's only for around 20 seconds, so it becomes academic and it's back up and running. So there's your serial monitor again, back up to counting through the counters and refreshed every five to 10 seconds, depending on what you've chosen for the web page itself. And the Arduino just doing its thing over here. So what I will do so I'll just to show you in the code, down the bottom of the code. Okay, so if you look at your web server values, the web server refresh statement is here. And this is how frequently the web page and therefore the loop is actually iterating. So it's every five seconds and it's walking through that counter every five seconds as well and adding one 
or if both doors are open, adding two to the value. The counter value was at the bottom of the code and I've only got it set up as 10 here to show you the uh, actual circuit and the coding and everything working together. So there you have it. A fairly simple implementation of a door monitor, uh, depending on which door you've chosen. The only real challenges for this one is getting the ethernet cabling, so the network connectivity to it, and just getting some power to it. Um, you can, of course, if it's something that you really, really want to monitor in a remote location, you can apply solar power to this. You can make it sip the power quite well so it uh, won't just drain a bank of batteries constantly running. That is a different setup. Uh, you can also use uh, Wi-Fi modules, Bluetooth modules, and even GSM modules depending on your purpose. If you're keeping a track of your dollars and cents, this particular project, around $15 to $20 for one of the Ethernet shields, around $15 to $20 for an Arduino Uno. Um, they can get a bit dearer. Uh, depending on whether you're buying a genuine one or not. But we'll say around $40 for the two components there and those reed switches are about 3 to $4 each. So for under $50, as long as you can get power and ethernet to where you need it, uh, you can monitor one or multiple doors um, and give yourself a web page and email alerts. Well, that's about all we've got time for today. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you liked the video and found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you feel like subscribing, that would be great too. And I'll hope to see you next time.